and welcome to part three of our Bernoulli trials uh, video series. This is uh, questions that are looking for exactly or experiments to happen. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Um, so example one, uh, a fair six sided die is rolled until seven sixes appear. What is the probability that this will take exactly 10 rolls? So this is the type of question um, that kind of takes the Bernoulli trials a, a step further. So if we want this to happen or to take exactly 10 rolls, that means we're going to have a six on the 10th roll. So I'm going to say the 10th roll is a six. Now the probability of that of getting a six on that roll is one over six. Okay, that's the probability of getting a six on that roll, regardless of what has happened before that. Now, in order for the rest of this to be true, we need to get six sixes in the previous nine rolls. And it doesn't matter what order they come in. So in the previous nine, we need six out of nine. So we need six out of nine to happen. And we're gonna multiply that by this one sixth here. Now six out of nine, that's just gonna be a Bernoulli trials using our um, formula that we're used to using. And again, if you don't want to use the formula, you don't have to, that's the formula there. N choose or uh, times P to the power of R times Q to the power of N minus R. You don't need to use that. You can do it this way. Um, which builds the formula. So we want six sixes out of nine throws. Okay, so what do we want? We want to get a six. Now the probability of getting a six is one out of six. How many times do we want a six? We want six of them. Now we also want to not get a six. We want to get something else. The probability of getting something else is five out of six. And how many of these other ones do we want? Well, if we want six sixes out of nine, we want three of them. And then the question is, how many ways can this happen? Well, it's nine choose six. So we multiply that by nine choose six, like that. So here's our Bernoulli trial, and here's our 10th roll. So we go to our calculator, and we can do this in one go. So we have uh, nine choose six times one over six. That's just to the power of six. And then it's times five over six. And that's to the power of three. And then this is gonna be multiplied by 1 over 6 again and that's equal to 1.7365 by 10 to the minus 4 so that's 0 0.00017 I'll just take it to two significant figures there so that is 0 0.017 percent the chances of that happening so if you um, roll a die 10 times and you get seven sixes, which are seven six appearing on your 10th roll, the odds of that happening are 0 0.017. So very, very small as you can imagine. Another example then of this one, Okay, for all the golfers out there. So a golfer has a 5% chance of hit, hitting a hole in one on a par three hole. How many balls must she hit from the tee in order to ensure that the chances of getting a hole in one is at least 90%? Okay, so this is taking it even further again. And this would be kind of at the upper level of what you could be asked when it comes to Bernoulli trials. Okay, so for this, um, we set up an inequality. So um, the chances of getting a hole in one is at least 90%. So that's our inequality straight away. 
So it's greater than or equal to 0 0.9. Now, how do we get the probability here? So the probability of getting a uh, hole in one, the, the, we're asked here for the chances of getting a hole in one is at least 90%. They could, she could get two hole in ones, she could get three hole in ones. So we're going to go with, um, you know, at least uh, getting one hole in one. So the chances of getting a hole in one um, is going to be one minus the chances of not getting a hole in one. So one minus not uh, getting a hole in one. Let's just say that. Um, so what's that going to be? So one minus. Now, not getting a hole in one, so that would be um, getting 5% chance of the hole in one, so 0 0.05, and not getting any of them, that's to the power of zero. And then the rest of the time, uh, not getting a hole in one, so 0 0.95, and we want that as many times as we need, so that would be n times. And then how many ways can this happen? Well, this can only happen one way if the n choose zero, okay? So this looks a bit complicated. We have n's in there that we're not used to, but let's see what happens. Well, n choose zero, that's just one. So we can say that's one. Uh, 0 0.05 to the power of zero, well, anything to the power of zero is one. So the two of these, we can forget about straight away. So all I have is one minus 0 0.95 is greater than, or sorry, 95 to the power of n is greater than or equal to 0 0.9. And now I can work with this and I can work through the equation here in order to solve for n. So first thing will be to take one away from both sides. So we'll have minus 0 0.95 to the power of n is greater than or equal to 0 0.9 take away 1 is minus 0 0.1. I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 1 uh, to get rid of these minus signs. So that would be 0 0.95 to the power of n. Remember, when I multiply by a negative, I need to change the direction of that sign there. So that's less than or equal to 0 0.1. Now I want to get this n out of here, so what do I do? I use logs, so I take the natural log of 0 0.95 to the power of n is less than or equal to the natural log of 0 0.1. Now what I can do is, uh, laws of logs say that I can take this n out in front, so it's n log 0 0.95 is less than or equal to log 0 0.1. I want to isolate n on its own, so n, now here's the thing, so zero, uh, log of 0 0.95, let me just show you that on the calculator so you can see the natural log of 0 0.95 is equal to a negative number, okay, so don't worry about what, what it actually is, it's equal to a negative number, that's what's important, so that means if I divide by this thing here, Again, I need to change the direction of the sign. So n is greater than or equal to um, natural log of 0 0.1 divided by natural log of 0 0.95. So n is greater than or equal to this. So let's do that. So it's natural log of 0 0.1 divided by natural log of 0 0.95 and that is equal to 44.89 44.89 so if n is a natural number that's greater than or equal to 44.89 then n is equal to 45 so that means this golfer needs to take at least n equal to 45 or the golfer needs to take 45 shots in order on this par three hole in order to ensure that the chances of getting a hole in one is at least 90 percent so if she takes 45 shots on this particular hole uh, par three hole then the chances of getting a hole in one is 90 percent
Okay, so that's probably um, one of the hardest questions you'll get on the leave insert uh, when it comes to Bernoulli trials, something along those lines. So if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.